Hi everyone, this is topic 3, part 3. We are going to learn about connective tissue in this lecture. We have already covered epithelial, muscular and nervous tissue types. Connective tissue is the most abundant type of tissue in the human body and it has the widest distribution. It is made up of cells, the extracellular matrix and there are extracellular protein fibers in the ECM. Connective tissue has several functions. For example, it forms the structural framework of the body. An example of this would be the bones. Second, it transports fluid and dissolved materials. Example, blood. It protects organs. For example, fat, adipose tissue provides insulation. Supports, surrounds and connects other tissue. These are various membranes and coverings around any organ. They are all made up of connective tissue. Storing energy, for example, fat. Defending the body from microorganisms, for example, the white blood cells in blood. An important characteristic of connective tissue is its variability in function and this is because of the diversity in structure. First, there are variations in blood supply. Some connective tissues are highly vascularized. That means there are blood vessels inside those tissues and blood is transporting nutrients or waste products from that tissue. An example is bones. Bones are highly vascularized. But some other connective tissues can be really poorly vascularized or even avascular. For example, cartilages, they have very poor blood supply. Like all other tissues, connective tissues are also made up of cells, fibers and ECM. But the ECM in the connective tissue can be so different. It can be solid, it can be semi-solid, that means gel-like, or it can be fluid, which is liquid. For example, the ECM of bones is solid. The ECM of cartilages is semi-solid or gel-like and the ECM of blood is fluid and all of these bones, cartilages and blood are pooled together into the connective tissue category. Connective tissues are classified based on the nature of their ECM or the matrix. There are three categories of connective tissue. The first one is called connective tissue proper and this category the matrix is made up of fibers. These can be loose fibers or very densely packed fibers. The second category is known as fluid connective tissue where the ECM is fluid or liquid and blood and lymph are included in this category. The third category is called supporting connective tissue and here the ECM is gel-like or it is solid. For example, cartilages and bones. This figure shows the classification of connective tissues that we just discussed in the previous slide. We'll start with connective tissue proper. The connective tissue proper is made up of cells and the ECM has extracellular protein fibers. There are two types of cells present in the connective tissue proper. Some cells may be attached or fixed at one point and those are known as fixed cells. That means they don't move while other category of cells can freely move around. So those are known as the wandering cells. And the extracellular protein fibers present in the ECM are also of three types, collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. Collagen fibers are thick, elastic fibers are thin and slightly wavy, while the reticular fibers are really, really very thin. They are the thinnest. If you look at tissue samples under the microscope, the collagen fibers will stain pink. The elastic fibers will stain purple or dark blue, while the reticular fibers will stain brownish black. The function of collagen fibers is to provide tensile strength. That means uh, the collagen fibers resist stretching. The elastic fibers actually are distensible. That means they stretch and recoil, while the reticular fibers usually form networks. This table gives you a list of the fixed cells in connective tissue proper. For example, the fixed macrophages, these are the soldier cells, but the fixed macrophages stay at one place. Adipocytes are the fat cells. Melanocytes are uh, cells that contain melanin pigment and provide coloration to the skin or the hair. And this table gives you the list of the wandering cells in the connective tissue proper. Example, the free macrophages, which can move around and do immunosurveillance. Most of these cells are white blood cells that leave the blood circulation, become part of the lymphatic system, and they're involved in immunity. Connective tissue proper can further be classified into loose connective tissue proper and dense connective tissue proper. 
Loose connective tissue has three categories, areolar, adipose, and reticular tissues, while dense connective tissue also has three categories, dense irregular, dense regular, and elastic tissues. This figure contains a diagram and a micrograph showing the areolar connective tissue. Areolar connective tissue is mainly present in the deep dermis and its function is to connect the skin to the muscle and also helps in movement. This figure shows the histology of areolar connective tissue. Adipose tissue is mainly present under the skin. It is present in the hypodermis and most of the times it surrounds the internal organs because it provides cushioning effect. Function is cushioning and insulation. This figure shows you adipose tissue histology. Look at how the adipose cells look like uh, signet rings. It's because of the lipid droplet present in the cytoplasm that is pushing the nucleus to the periphery or near the cell membrane. The third type of loose connective tissue proper is called reticular tissue and its location is liver, spleen, kidney, etc. And function is to provide a supporting framework. And this figure shows reticular connective tissue. Look at the brownish black color of the section on the right side. We are done with loose connective tissue proper and now we move on to dense connective tissue proper. And the first in the dense connective tissue proper is dense irregular connective tissue. This tissue is present in the coverings around nerve and muscles and function is to provide strength. This is how dense irregular connective tissue appears. Dense regular connective tissue has very special locations. It is present in tendons, ligaments and aponeurosis. What's a tendon? A tendon is a structure that connects a muscle to the bone, while ligament connects bone to bone. Aponeurosis connect muscle to muscle. This figure shows the histology of dense regular connective tissue. Elastic connective tissue is present between the vertebrae, which are the units of the vertebral column, or in the ligaments supporting the penis. The function is stabilization. It also has a cushioning effect. We have completed connective tissue proper and now we are moving on to fluid connective tissue. That means where the ECM is made up of fluid or uh, liquid component. And the first type of fluid connective tissue is blood. Blood is located inside the circulatory system. Blood is made up of three types of cellular elements. The first one is red blood cells or erythrocytes. The second one is white blood cells or leukocytes. And the third one is platelets or thrombocytes. The red blood cells have hemoglobin, which is important in transport of oxygen. The white blood cells serve as your soldiers, so they fight infections, while platelets or thrombocytes are involved in blood clotting. The liquid part of the blood is known as the plasma. This figure shows the formed elements of blood, that means the solid part of the blood. The liquid part, remember, is known as the plasma. The second type of fluid connective tissue is lymph, which is located in the lymphatic system. And it is mainly made up of lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cells. And the lymphocytes develop into the T and the B cells. Their main function is immunity, and the T and the B lymphocytes are the most specialized soldiers in your body.